Well, good morning. I'm here with Julio today of Dragonfly Drone Services. So thanks so much for joining me, Julio. Thank you for the invitation. Absolutely. Well, uh, let's let's dive in and learn a little bit about you. I was curious sure. to start with just about your business name. How did you choose that? Uh, we choose the Dragonfly because uh, it's uh, the pattern with the, how, how a Dragonfly uh, flight it's almost the same as a drone fly. I mean, they can hover, they can move left, they can move right up and down. I mean, so, and also it's another way to show that we eco-friendly because because before drones, uh, there was a lot of, uh, if you want to get aerial pictures you or video, you need to use a helicopter, which is gasoline, fumes and stuff. A drone doesn't create nothing, nothing like that. So it's more eco-friendly. So it's kind of like, uh, uh, a mix between the two. Sure, and dual messaging, interesting. Yeah, that's true, I've never thought of it, but it, it does move the same way. Yeah. Um, and what is your background? How did you originally get into drones? Uh, I got a gift from my wife with the uh, um, R, uh, RC helicopter on 2010, and I was going to the park, uh, and that's when drones started coming out. And I'm like, uh-huh. So I start watching videos. I see all the stuff that you can do with a drone. And I was like, how about if we put a camera on it? And there we go. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then, so you had an RC helicopter. So then what was your first actual drone? Um, it was, uh, it was nothing like they have right now. I still have it like a trophy um it doesn't have any sensor only have four motors a battery and a whole bunch of cable it doesn't even have a body oh uh -huh. yeah it, it's like uh, the frankenstein of the uh, drones <laughs> uh -huh. so you were definitely an early adopter then yeah i mean it was and i i that thing i crashed that thing like so many times because it was no control like uh you have it right now that you can put your drone up in the air and remove your hand for like a second or two out of the and he stay hovering. No, this one it will need a constant uh, corrections mm -hmm. on the control. Yes. And w when did you then decide, hey, I'm going to pursue a drone business. I need to get commercially licensed. You know, kind of what were you coming from? What was the story around that? I uh, decide uh, at the end of 2015 that I want to get this for uh, for a living. I want to do this because I really like it. Uh, but it wasn't until 2016, right when they released the uh, FAA 10 Part 107 test. It was more for Cessna pilots than for drone because they didn't have nothing. Uh, luckily, I was the first person from Philadelphia to get the test and pass the test because they was counting people uh -huh. back then. And uh, yeah, I got like uh, five years already doing that. Yeah, that makes you an old timer for sure. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Uh huh. All right. Um, and were you coming from a business where you were doing kind of photography and working with this target market or? Not at all. No. I was a mechanic looking for a hobby and now I'm a drone pilot using mechanic as a hobby. Okay. Yes. Awesome. And so are you full-time now in your drone business? Uh, we start uh, full-time and then COVID-19 hit, everything shut off. And now we try, we pick it up, but because it's not fast enough, it's not enough uh, work out there on this area. Uh, we are like part time. We start to merging, start to getting all our customer back because uh, because of the uh, distance uh, that we have here, uh, all the constructions it was on it, it, it falling to a halt. It was no construction, so it was no progress. So it was no reason for us to be there. Uh -huh. Same thing with the realtors. It was uh, no remodelation of houses or flipping houses, how they call it. So everything was on standby. We still got customers telling us, listen, get ready for this year that we're running right now. Because uh, we go, we're going back. We're just getting everything situated. So yeah. Mm -hmm. But right now we're like part-time slash almost full-time. We, we, we're getting back into it. Good. I'm glad to hear that. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, and that was part of why I reached out to you is as I as you shared that video of a construction crew and um, which was really really neat. Um, yeah, and so you serve not only the um, kind of so contractors but also residential real estate like brokers and um, do you really have then one particular niche or there there are several that you serve. Um, right now, I'm like 60% uh, constructions and 40% commercial and residential real estate. Because mm -hmm. that's how, how that's how the uh, calls that we get. We get more calls from construction sites mm -hmm. than for real estate. And I was curious, with the construction sites, is that really where like the contractors are using that for promotional purposes? Is it for insurance? Is it both? uh they use it for first of all they use it for progress report so the uh project manager the engineer and everybody uh, on the office they know uh how the construction is going because we gotta go uh let's say once a month and start taking pictures and video and we submit it so they see how how things are going is something is per is, is it need to be redirected or redo or something like that then they use uh, some of the videos for marketing for their own construction company. And also uh, they use it to submit it to the uh, customer that they working for. For example, the one that I, the one that I uh, placed with the highway, that's the Pennsylvania Turnpike. Uh, they're doing an, ext an extension. So they need to submit a uh, progress report to Pennsylvania. Um, I don't know how they call it here, DMV, something like that. I don't, I really don't know that one because I'm working with a construction company. I, I'm not working with the government. Okay. I see. Um, <laughs> this just made me think about 10 years ago, I lived in Tacoma, Washington, uh -huh. and they're building a bridge over a freeway. Yes. And when it came together, it came like this. Oh, somebody, <laughs> somebody got fired right there. <laughs> it could be some drone footage. Of <laughs> Actually, wow. not, not going to meet. <laughs> I don't yeah. Know. yeah, kind of a fail. As a photographer, uh, I would ask him, do you want me to Photoshop that one so he looks straight? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They definitely need help, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, and so when you're going out there that once a month to document, how long does that typically take you? Uh, between four and six hours since from the moment that I pull up to the place because I, I, for example, the one on the uh, turnpike, that's six miles that I have to cover. So yeah, that one take me. Uh, I got another contract with them on other places on Jersey. They, it took me two hours, one hour, depending if everything is on the same spot, but it, it, it will be faster. If I need to move, I need to, it will take more time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's quite a stretch, six miles. Um, yeah. And you said that you can, sometimes you'll share the raw video, sometimes you edit it. Oh, no, 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 no. As a photographer, we never, we never share raw videos. Well, what I meant is, uh, um, for example, I got some brokers that they from Miami and they buy properties here on uh, Pennsylvania and they want to see the property right away. So I say, I can share with you the uh, live feed mm -hmm. from my drone. So everything, you're going to see a raw. It's no music, it's not nothing. You're going to be hearing the, the boosting, or the, the bossing, I'm sorry, of the drone. The same thing that I'm looking at on the moment, you're gonna be seeing it. So mm -hmm. that's that's another pitch line that I use that I can also give to the customer, so they don't need to fly from Miami to Pennsylvania just to see one property. If that's the case, uh huh. Right. And then they can also be like, "Hey, can we take a look to the right? What's the view?" Yes. Play that interactive on the yeah site experience. Got it. Um, and what is your, how are you getting the leads? What, how is it, what methods are you using to reach out to, to get these jobs that you want? I try Facebook, I try Instagram, and also I try uh, Google ads. Uh, at some point I have a marketing person that was doing the leads, but they heard, the thing is that if you don't know about drones, you're missing on the information that you need and what to put on it as a marketing person sure so on google ads it's like uh you can create one minute video and you you do the video the way you like it how you want it 
and you put it, I put it to run for like two weeks, maybe. With all the, uh, if I'm, if I'm trying to reach out to brokers, I get all the video is done uh, showing different type of uh, v, um, buildings or malls or stuff like that. And uh, um, when I, I'm sorry, when I when I post the video, I also uh, Google give it a chance to the, um, show like uh, uh, if you want to be called now, if you want to reach, if you want them to reach your website. They broker. They don't have time to go out on the website. So you want to talk to them on the phone and close the deal right there. So I just haven't then call me for more information. And for the information, I do my pitch line. If uh, they like it, they buy it. If they don't like it, I'll learn something new. Move mm -hmm. to the next one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so then you can, yeah, really target who you're trying to reach. Yes. Um, so it sounds like that's been out of what you tested. Uh, and then you also mentioned referrals, so kind of word of mouth. Yeah, I mean, uh, most of the construction, uh, the uh, the construction company I'm working for, they big. So from that uh, turnpike job that I did, I already got five more mm -hmm. from different from the same company, but different uh, project manager because they got one project manager for every project that they have. Mm -hmm. So they just pass the information. Hey, I found this guy doing this photo, this video. Look at this. Maybe you can use it for your for, for the thing that you're doing right now. And they just call you. I mean, sometimes you get the call in the middle of the night and you're like, oh, who's this? And, hey, I need you to come to my place and, and do this, this, this. Can, can you do it this week? Uh, yeah, I mean, let me check the weather and I get back to you. That's the that's the line. Let me check the weather because, you know, we depend 100% on the weather. Right. Let me check the weather and I get back to you in a few hours. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, hey, you'll take it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Um, now, I know you've been doing this for a while, but if, as you look back, are, are there any shoots in particular that were really your favorite, that were really um, a different experience or great yes. outcome? Uh, it's a lot that I like, but the ones that, 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 that I always um, think about is uh, is this play on New York called Arthur Kill Ship Graveyard. I don't know. Um, okay. It's... Uh, uh, they got all type of uh, ships that they don't and vessels that they don't use no more. Oh my God. I mean, that, that place is for me because I like all stuff. Uh -huh. I like to dig into what happened there, what, where this come from and every ship that have a history. So I went and recorded. I mean, uh -huh. I, 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 and I went twice. I like it so much that I went twice. Uh huh. That sounds really fascinating. Yeah. So now I'm curious. Do you have that on your website? Yes, uh, it's on the Arthur Arthur Kill Graveyard. Okay, I'll put a link under here under this video so anyone else who's interested can check you. it out too. Um, so that sounds really interesting. Now, how about a least favorite? I got one. It was this uh, property that it was a nice. Uh, oh my God, it was a nice uh, um, residential property. But it was surrounded for so many trees and power lines that that's a nightmare when you find drones. Mm -hmm. And it was windy that way. So yeah, it, it took me way twice the time to do a 360, a 180, because I mean, because uh, the, the requirement was I need to get a view of the house 50 feet off the ground. That's right there on the trees. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that, that was, I mean, that was the hard one. That was my test for right, right there. Uh -huh. Nerve wracking. Yeah. Like. Yeah. You got scared. Cause I mean, you don't know if you, if you hit the tree, it's going to stay on the tree. It's going to fall on you. It's going to fall on a car. It's going to fall on people. Cause that's, that's another thing. It was residential. So people was coming outside and looking, looking up. Uh -huh. like, oh my God, that looks so cool. Said, yeah. Can you stay behind me? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Well, I'm glad you made it out in one piece with your drone. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so the ship graveyard you said was one really fascinating place. And I did notice that you like to shoot abandoned places on your blog. Yes. Um, and so is that just your own personal interest or 
Um, never have a request from any customer unless it's a broker that they want to remodel the place uh -huh. and just get something else done out of it. But uh, I live on, on PA. PA. PA have a lot of uh, history and a lot of places that they abandon. So the only place you can get access is with a drone because it's no either it's no other way to walk in the place. Either they just close and they don't they don't have any permits or they don't allow you to get in. Uh, or it's really physically no way to get there by walking. You need to fly. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. So uh, there, there is a lot. I mean, it's a lot, a lot of history here on, on PA, Philadelphia and stuff like that. Sure. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, because I'm out here in, on the West Coast. So, yeah, um, I guess our more interesting stuff is all underground. <laughs> um, now, you know, these longer term contracts with construction companies is kind of the holy grail, right? Where the compensation is usually good, it's, it's recurring. What words of advice would you have to share with somebody who wants to similar contracts? Yeah, um, first of all, um, focus on what you like to do because it's, it doesn't matter how much they pay you. If you don't like it, you ain't gonna do it with the same passion. Uh, and regardless of your skill or the gear uh, that, that you own, if you don't spend the time and the money on marketing, you will not get the results that you want. That I learned that the hard way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So some in some way, form or fashion, you're going to be paying for the opportunity, whether it's putting in the yeah. time cold calling, that Google ads, etc. I mean, um, not, not, not for everybody. I mean, for me, I find out that Google ad, it works better than Facebook, Instagram, and even TikTok right now. You can do marketing on TikTok. But for me, Google ad, it works. Maybe mm -hmm. for someone else, it got better luck on Instagram and stuff like that. So you, you have to try, you have to spend the time and the money until you find this is the one that gets me the, the, the most people. And uh, for, 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 um, for one customer that you get, trust me, he gonna show if the video, when the video, when they got the video, if the video is good enough, they're gonna feel like uh, this is my place. I mean, I want to show this place and he showed it to someone else and that's someone else like, who did that for you? And that's when your name comes out. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, for somebody who is on the, the just getting started, do you recall what it was like when it was kind of new to you? And you might not have experienced this, but like that imposter syndrome, right? Like where you want to deliver, but you're kind of afraid. Is that something you recall going through? Still to the, until today, I got the same mm, butterflies on my stomach the few minutes before taking off on a new place because you don't know what happened. Right. You don't know what's going to happen. I mean, it doesn't matter. You just need to get over with and and do your best. Uh, the most important thing when you go to a location, it doesn't matter if you be on the location four weeks prior, always do a scoop of the whole area. You don't know how change. Mm -hmm. You don't know if some, if some type of a cell antenna is being installed and stuff like that and it was gonna interfere with the, the signal on your drone if you if you own a let's say a dgi yeah you want to look for anything that can interfere with your signal because mm -hmm. they know by that mm -hmm. so yeah err on the side of being over prepared and yeah i'm mean, just good going for it mm -hmm. yeah um thank you for sharing that is there anything else any other perspective that like to, to share with somebody who's again maybe still struggling to get these jobs or um to be ramping up their business as you've gone through i think i mentioned it already but uh i, I got a line uh is uh, i will always say trying to run a business without marketing it's like a trying to live a whole life without food uh -huh. that's that's my model right now i mean if you need it doesn't matter how good i am what equipment I have, I need to do marketing. That's the way people know where I am and the and what I do. Mm -hmm. Right. It's essentially the fuel for your business. Yeah, exactly. For any business, I would say. 
do you have certain non-negotiables every week? Like do you have a system of a certain number of emails or outreaches you make so that your pipeline is full or it really just varies on where you are and how busy you are? Um, I, I'm on the Northeast and the uh, drone business in here is just like something still, something new. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the people, they don't know uh, that you need insurance, that you need certifications, that uh, it's illegal to fly without even the uh, drone registration. So when you reach a new customer, the first interview that you have with them is you showing them what is a drone, what type of business is a drone business and how legit is. Because most of them think that you just went to a store or on the website and got one and all right, I made some stickers and some business cards and they go, no, it's a whole process. You have to explain them. You have to put the time on it. If it's, this is something you like, you have to put the time on it. And uh, eventually your name will go out and people will call you. And the first thing that they will tell you is, listen, I got uh, your name and your information from this person that you did a job for them and they happy with it and they recommend you. So I'm trying to see how you can help me to sell this house or to do this or do that. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not only that, you got also weddings, uh, uh, crops, but here in this area is constructions and real estate. Mm -hmm. We got weddings, but the area where they do the weddings is really hard to fly a drone. So I just pass it on to somebody that I know they do weddings. Mm -hmm. So you stay in your kind of more your special piece. Yes. Yeah. Because that's a, that's another thing. If you have a website and you showing on your website, yeah, I do weddings, I do uh, um, map, mapping, I do construction, I do you doing so many things and you giving the 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 um how you call it? You just showing that I can do anything and. When the customer is looking for somebody that is a, a professional on this, like on construction, or that's why I stay on this three uh, broker for commercial uh, property or residential and construction because it's some type of relationship. It's almost the same thing. It's mm -hmm. almost the same thing. So mm -hmm. you you, you want to look you. That's why I say you have to find out what do you like to do, and find your niche and stay and stick with it and trust me it's hard at the beginning god it's hard it's hard but mm -hmm. if you stay there and you learn from the process once you break that you good you're good yeah absolutely i, I love that you shared that because that's the advice i give too right you want to be the guy known for the thing or the gal known for the thing um otherwise you're kind of in this master of none you know i wouldn't mm -hmm. trust someone to shoot my wedding if they also had like pet rescue and exactly. power line inspection. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly why. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and it's it's working for you. So you, that's that's amazing. So what's next for you? What you what do you foresee for the summer? We were talking about how COVID is starting to open things up again. So um, I'm trying to get more constructions company. Uh, to, I, I just uh, I googled them because I see that we have some new. Uh, construction company moving to the area because they um they doing uh, a lot of construction around and uh because they just reopening everything and we just this week they they just remove all the restrictions so you can be normal i should say no mask no nothing so now i can go i like the person on person um uh conversation sure. when it's like here in the area so they can see like, uh, yeah, this person is right here. I can call him, you know. Um, so this is my, my plan right now for this year. And uh, I'm working on it is to get more uh, um, construction companies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I'm sure that you will. Like I said, that video you put up was so cool. And I love the music with thank it. You. Um, so yeah, well, again, thank you for your time today. I really appreciate you no sharing. Problem. My um, pleasure. Love to see what you're doing. And um, yeah, I'll keep my eye out for the next uh, abandoned scenario that you're <laughs> you're up to videoing up. <laughs> that fascinates me too. Uh, all right, I will let you know. Okay, well, thank you, Julio. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Of course, you too, take care.